I mentioned at the beginning of this particular course about making decisions regarding priority. And this is a very complex issue. Very few people understand priority when it comes to setting devices. And what I mean by very few people, you might think, well, then how do people do this? Well, the logic. See what happens. There's actually a logic that you can apply to the priority. I mean, a lot of people recognize, oh, this is more important, this is more important, and they set the devices accordingly. But there's actually a logical method that you can use when you're trying to identify priority. And you might think, what's priority have to do with this? Well, let, let me explain about the different priority of devices because each protective device has a certain priority in the grand scheme of things. You can't say that every single device is important and so let's have coordination absolutely everywhere. I mean, you'd like to do that, but in reality, as, as you've seen, if you've ever performed a study or you'll see when we get into a little more, when we go a little more deeper into this, that priority, not every device is as important as every other device. And so you may think, so So, how does this play in to what we're talking about? Well, here's what happens. When you perform a coordination study, normally you are not just looking at time current curves of one or two or even three devices. Normally, you're looking at time current curves of many devices. The utility device, the facility main, the feeder, a sub switchboard or panel board and then another feeder and then another panel and so normally what you're looking at is you're looking at a path a circuit with many many devices as part of that circuit and you try to draw the time current curves of all of those devices on one graph there's kind of an interesting thing that happens it doesn't matter whether you have two devices or ten devices they all seem to pile up together on the graph and you look at that and it's like, how on earth am I going to separate these and get them to coordinate? And that's the issue. Rarely can you coordinate all of the devices in a system, especially when you have a lot of devices. And so what happens at that point is you have to begin establishing priority, recognizing, okay, which devices are the most critical devices and which devices may not be quite as important because what's going to happen, and this is at the heart of a coordination study, is sometimes you have to intentionally miscoordinate devices where coordination isn't that important. Literally, give them the same setting. Make them behave as one device. If either one trips, oh well. It's like, really? Sometimes that has to happen. And to be able to make those decisions you have to establish what's known as priority. Which device is more important? So we try to coordinate with that. Which devices are less important? So if we have to intentionally miscoordinate, those are the devices that we'll miscoordinate with. So how do you determine the priorities of the devices? Well, let's say that we have this case where we have four devices in series. We have the main, we have a feeder, we have a main down here, we have another feeder. And let's say we run into the case where we can't perfectly coordinate everything, so we intentionally miscoordinate. How do you make those decisions? And what does intentionally miscoordinating look like? Here's what we have. You have to look at the priority in terms of what I define as an A priority and a B priority. And let me explain the difference between an A priority and a B priority. A is the highest priority, and an A priority means that you have a device such as this main on the left, and then you have multiple feeders. And the A priority, that's the highest priority because if that main trips, you'll lose more than one circuit. You have a wider outage. Let's say the event is right here, you want to try to have the best coordination possible between the feeder and the main. Because if the main trips, now you've not just isolated this feeder, but you've also taken out these other circuits. That's undesirable. You have a wider spread outage. Whereas the B priority, 
where you have one device feeding only one other device. And in this case, if either one of those devices trip, you're losing the same load. You're losing the same panel. So when you have a B priority, if you have to intentionally miscoordinate, miscoordinate the devices for the B priority. Because if either one trips, you're going to lose the same load. Whereas the A priority, if that main trips, you're going to lose much more load. Now with this, let's go back to our one line and let's look at the priorities that we have here. The main, that's an A priority. But there's also another main down at panel PP1, which is also an A priority. The B priority would be this device, the feeder. If that feeder trips, oh well, whether the feeder trips or the main down at PP1 trips, you're going to dump the entire load of PP1. So in that case, coordination from the feeder of the switchboard that I identify as B and the main of the panel that I identify as A, if either one of those trip, doesn't matter. You're still going to lose power panel one. So if you have to miscoordinate devices so that you have room to coordinate the more important devices, you would miscoordinate the two devices from the switchboard feeder and power panel one main. Then we have another B device, this device right here, the branch. That's the least important device down here. Now, if you look at this, like, well, wait a minute. We have two A priorities. We have two B priorities. How do we know the single device that is the most important device in the power system? What you do is you look at all the A priorities and the A that is furthest up in the system, that is the most important device. The next A downstream, that's the second most important device, and so on. So what we would do is we would look at the main as A and call it A1. That is the most important device. And then the next one is our next A device, and we'll call that A2. And then we have the B device, B1 and B2. And so this identifies the importance of coordinating with these different devices. So what this is telling us is that when you're drawing time current curves, at all costs, do not miscoordinate with device A1. Miscoordinate everything else in the system if you have to. Don't miscoordinate with A1. Because if that device trips, you've shut down the whole facility. Second most important device in this particular circuit is A2. Because if that device trips, you're also tripping more load. You could extend this over to the right side for power panel two. Power panel two, this device would also be an A device. This would be A2. Because if this trips, you're losing all the load down here. So this would actually be A2. That's the second most important device. So you want to make sure that everything down here coordinates with this device. And above all, make sure everything here coordinates with A1. This is a logic that I used almost four decades ago in developing software, in developing coordination software. To try to put this into a logical terms, this is how you prioritize and define which devices are more important and which devices are less important. I had a question about, uh, so I can have multiple A2s and A3s. Yes, so the way this works is we're looking at priority of just one circuit. So in this one circuit, forget about everything else. In this one circuit, we have A1, B1, A2, B2, because this one circuit, we're looking at the graphs and the coordination for a fault down here. How is it going to affect all of these devices? And then if you wanted to coordinate the circuit down to power panel two, this would be a separate priority. This would be a separate graph. You would have the main here coordinating with this device, coordinating with this device. So each circuit 
each path is going to be its own time current graph. You have all the devices of everything on that first path on a graph. Well, I shouldn't say all the devices because if you have too many, then you break it up. I'll explain that in a moment. But you have that path represented by one, maybe two graphs, everything in series. And then on the right, you have all those devices that are all in series. And so you look at each circuit, establish the priority for each circuit individually. And that's how you go about this. Now, I mentioned just a moment ago that you may actually have to represent using two graphs or something like that.